Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space, where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to another episode of the Prog Talks. I'm your host, Dario. And uh, before we start, as always, um, don't forget to maybe get us a little cup of coffee. This is... Uh, Today it's actually coffee because you can see it's uh, light outside. It's uh, um, not evening as as usual. Um, but uh, I'm calling to Australia, all the way to Western Australia, with um, Alex and Scott from Voyager on the other end, and it's evening for them, right? Uh, hi guys, yep. how are you doing? Hi. <laughs> hey, hey. Good evening, Daria. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. It's it's 1 p.m. Uh, in the mid middle of the day here in Munich, and um, yeah, usually um, most of our interview guests are, um, you know, we invite them when they have a, have a new album out or some like you know some big news. Now maybe you guys out there have seen that Voyager has a new single out, which is called Dreamer, and um, well, usually we don't invite bands that only got a new single out, but there's a special significance to that single and um yeah maybe you want to tell us what what's that <laughs> yeah well Dr dreamer is our entry into eurovision australia decides song contest so it's uh it's us representing you know our, our home city of perth and also the um the wider international heavy music scene of which Dario, you're a part, you know, <laughs> and uh, I, I feel like Dreamer for like Scott, you'd probably agree. I mean, the the rest of us would probably agree with this. Is that like when I when I watched when I'm watching Dreamer this video clip back and thinking about how you know we've been getting all this mainstream attention now. It's like it's it's cool to have this spotlight and um and feel that we're kind of doing this carrying like or, or we're doing this with you know, festivals like Euroblast and like, and Prog Power Europe and all these gigs that we've done through Europe over, you know, the last 10 years or whatever, we're kind of like, we're just kind of, I feel like we've got the support of all of this experience that we've had in Europe in particular. And um, <laughs> it feels, it feels really good. Yeah. Like I really want, I, I really like that we're representing this, this progressive music scene that we've, um, you know, we've been a part of for a, a long time now. Hmm. Yeah, there's 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 so so many questions um, uh, in my head that I don't know where to start. Um, you just yeah. mentioned the video. Maybe we start with the video. Um, I think that... your first question should be why Australia is competing in this contest at all. I thought that would be number one. Number one. Eurovision. Question. I don't think we're anywhere near <laughs> European. So. The well, uh, the best part, Scott, is right that we're, we're being in Perth. Western Australia, we're actually closer to Europe than the Eastern states. So purely by virtue of uh, <laughs> geographical proximity, we should have the, the upper hand in this, right? We should be a little bit w more worthy than more, everyone yeah. else. We're, we're a little <laughs> bit more European than, <laughs> than yeah, the rest yeah. of Australia. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a great way to look at it. Now, actually, uh, to be honest, I um, believe it or not, I've never seen like the entire Eurovision finale um, broadcast ever. Just some snippets here and there. Shame on me. Um, but Shame that's on, yeah. pro probably going to change uh, this year. Yeah. Um, so Australia decides it's going to be on February 25th, 26th um, yeah. on the other side of Australia, right? Uh, Gold yeah. Coast. Um, the Gold, Gold Coast, Coast, yeah. Um, but that video, um, I think that that uh, venue was a little bit familiar for Voyager fans, as you also uh, you you did the stream streaming concert. Um, this uh, what, what what was the event called? Um, a voyage through, through time. time. Yes. Yeah. Um, did you did you shoot the video at the same time or later at a later date? Yeah, it was literally we we finished recording the set and we said, "Hey, Joe." Uh, can you shoot a video clip for us? <laughs> um, we didn't. We, we basically went into it with almost no real plan at all, other than the space we we're in, and we thought, well, we might as well capitalize. Um, Dean, our lighting guy, didn't have any real 
set up or plan either other than you know what he had control over for the live show and um so amazingly a lot of that clip was just sort of improvising um we just kind of did what we could with the space and the time that we had after being bloody exhausted recording for <laughs> two straight days um and so i mean it's it's actually pretty amazing the fact that we were able to make something you know that we think is pretty damn solid considering how little time we had to organize it yeah so yeah. so at that point that song was already you were already you already knew that you were going to compete with this song yeah that was that was already in the the plans were already made and uh <laughs> yeah i mean it was obviously there's no surety that we we're going to be in the top 10 it was like that was our our intention was to um yeah to submit dreamer as the song um but i mean yeah we we weren't to know how far we would actually get with it so we mm -hmm. just had to put our best foot forward and and assume and just you know and hope but Scott, do you uh, remember how like, many? We, we, yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Dario. I was just going to say when when we played when we recorded the video clip for it. Yeah, like Scott said, we're all exhausted, right? And you know, we had to pack all the staging and all the lighting and everything down, and it took forever. And it was it was a mammoth live stream. <laughs> um, but well, you didn't we, you, you didn't just leave and 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 let Aiden do a, do oh, Aiden, yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Like it's broke the fourth wall. I broke the fourth wall. <laughs> Shit, they, no one was supposed to know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we're not we're not that bad to our uh, <laughs> our sound guys, <laughs> but we we had we were so tired from recording this whole live stream album, and then when it came to actually um, recording the Dreamer track, like it just reinvigorated us. Like having this new track that sounded so cool. I mean, and we were just we were rocking out to a demo version of it, at, <laughs> like for the recording of it, because it obviously mm -hmm. hadn't been properly recorded or mixed or anything. But we all just like we felt it, and you know, doing doing the the synchronized spins on the breakdowns, it just felt so cool. We're all just pumped, <laughs> and it, just, it like and it re-energized us after yeah, like two long days of of filming and setting yeah. up and all the rest. So it was, I mean, like that was a really good indication that the song for us like put us in a good mood and and really it, it well it fucking rocked you know like <laughs> that's a, it's a good metric right when you feel it you can you can try and you, it's easier to sell so uh, yeah. yeah um i i, I want to uh, jump right into the song in a second but before before i forget i want to ask because you said that there was no guarantee that you would end up in this in the top 10 or or anything so um how many how many entries do you think uh, are there every year um Oof. round about, like uh, like any hundred i would say hundreds or thousands potentially i mean it's hard to know um I, i think there would be a lot of people um submitting all kinds of stuff and and i mean correct me if i'm wrong i'm not entirely sure if this is true or not but i think songwriters can submit tunes that they themselves aren't going to perform later so I think there are just people who submit songs for like pop artists and then some bigger name pop artists, I think, can come in and then sort of select a tune that they've heard from the submission pool that they mm -hmm. like and kind of can move on with it. Um, I, yeah, I'd be saying at least hundreds of songs. <laughs> there, there were there, there was an artist, I think, in one of the uh, artist reveal videos that I saw. You know, this is one of the Australian people. They said that they were, you know, perusing the, yeah, the the song the song pool or the the submission folder for, for songwriters that had put forth their work to be represented and they found a song that they really liked and they you know put some vocals to it and that just well one that blew my mind i didn't even know that was an option uh <laughs> and two just like it kind of i don't know it seemed it, it was just alien you know a lot of this a lot of this is alien to us because we've just I been wonder, grinding I, I, so I, I, long <laughs> Yeah, I wonder. You know, I wonder. I wonder what these these kind of songwriters uh, think of you know bands like 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 Voyager, who are like, who would have thunk it, actually right, yeah. uh, <laughs> write their own music and perform yeah. it, and now par <laughs> participating in the Eurovision Song Contest, which which was invented as a competition for the songwriters originally, if I'm not mistaken. So, what's in the name isn't it yeah <laughs> mm. yeah yeah i mean i think it, it is i think we do have some 
some extra like brownie points on our side because of the fact that we both write and perform the music ourselves. So we can take the credit for being the performers as well as the people who actually, you know, came up and catalyzed the song in the first place. I think that there's there's a lot to be said for not only representing ourselves and and the band but also representing the content that we make as well because i think that that is something that the pop world is very different uh to the heavy music world i think that's probably the biggest difference to be honest is um in the metal world every single heavy band writes their own music but in the pop world i would i mean i don't know what the percentages would be but i, I would assume that at least half of the pop artists have you know songwriters and producers external to them that write music almost entirely for them so yeah um, it's a very different yeah it's very different i guess very different world um yeah now we're 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 automatically landed on the songwriting aspect and um so how how was it i mean you 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 um you wrote the song with the song contest in mind right i'm not really sure about this one i think we, we had i mean do you remember alex i mean for, from recollection we had a different song in mind to submit and then i think we kind of decided that this one was more appropriate or more dramatic i guess um look dario I, think... the, I did I, <laughs> i had to ask answer this question in another interview yesterday and um rather than tell the truth which is very boring um i just I said that um, Danny instead ate a particularly hot vindaloo one night and uh, had a fever dream. And uh, he basically astral traveled to uh, Club Berghain uh, and uh, met with a, an enchanted elder DJ who whispered a secret incantation into his ear. And then the next day at rehearsal, Danny came to us with the, the melodies that, had, that you know, appeared from the ether to him. And then we all worked on the song and then jammed it and then that was it. Um, I, I feel that that's a much more fascinating story than the reality of probably, I think Danny had my, a lot of the song already done from some time ago. And then we, we fleshed it out all together over the space of like, I don't know, I want to say even a month, Scott, maybe two yeah. months. Yeah. That's like we, right. Every weekend, every Sunday we, morning, we were like sitting down in that room that Scott's sitting in now and just like went over each part each part and then we we had it and we're like yep this is great and then we got some feedback on it and it was like now nah, we need to let's let's add some more drama to it and uh and then we had to rework it and all in this time frame of three minutes which is just you know we're a, we're a prog band after all right this is like how dare you three minutes <laughs> that, that that would have been my exactly. next question <laughs> uh, that, that would have been my next question. Was it uh, is it is it uh, liberating or or more uh, restricting and constraining uh, to, to to fit yeah. everything in into um, three minutes or under three minutes? I think um, we saw it as a really awesome kind of challenge in a way. Um, yeah. it, the, the the songwriting approach um, in general was we 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 kind of have always said this about ourselves that we we hate being bored. By things, I think it's it's a very much a, an ADD sort of thing that we we need our we need our attention peaked at, at every given moment, and obviously pop music is sort of catering to to that sort of sen sensibility as well, which I think is a good thing ultimately. Um, so it was kind of it was very challenging. It was tricky cutting things and and you know asking ourselves the question constantly like, is this moving ahead quick enough? Is this going somewhere quick enough? was a question we asked ourselves a lot in the process. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of stuff that we kind of had to put on the cutting room floor as a result, but. I think it was good for Danny because it's, it's, it's well known, I guess, amongst us in the band that Danny's probably got the shortest attention span out of anyone. Um, and he, he just like, he'll almost want to just leave riffs and parts way too early you know and you know opeth is my favorite band and they're probably even <laughs> it's the complete opposite of opeth where they're just like you know almost 24 bars of just one <laughs> one solid riff one and it just riff, allows yeah. you to marinate in it and feel the emotion of it where danny's like oh, i'm bored now let's go to the next bit next bit next bit <laughs> so we all kind of got in his headspace <laughs> yeah we've gotten his headspace and uh and you know we're i've actually what's been really cool is that having a song that's three minutes is allowing people to digest it so much easier. And I think like 
even the fact that you know eurovision aside having a three minute song is easy for anyone to just take a moment to listen to in its entirety mm-hmm. instead of you know oh well the the intro tracks three minutes i mean us our, our songs aren't particularly long anyway but we i think we normally average for, about for prog four and a half standards. To five minutes <laughs> for prog standards yeah, yeah, yeah prog of course standards. yeah but like it's it's insane trying to trying to take our standard four and a half minutes and squash it down to three like that that minute and a half is huge i mean that's 33 percent of a song right that's a lot um so it's a matter of you know all of our typical you know typical writing tropes that we might lean on in order to produce a song we we kind of had to completely discard in a way um which was weird for us but i think ultimately it actually put us in a really good place for songwriting in in the future you know we've, a lot of the music we've, that we've written around sure. it yeah a lot of the music we've written around it i think is much more to the point um without losing the voyeurisms you know i think we we all love music that that's complicated and and that makes you think but we also like a good hook and that that sort of moved through more of the songwriting that we've done in recent time as well yeah you you said earlier that that uh, that initially there was another a, a different song that you had in mind uh, for maybe uh sending in um but uh speaking of songs voyager songs that are that are already out there is is there any any other songs from from the uh voyager back catalog that you could imagine um um that would suit the eurovision song contest as well uh, maybe in a in a, in a like shorter a different... edit <laughs> yeah yeah um well i mean runaway runaway was a submission that we put out for eurovision uh what two two years ago um so yeah. that one was was sort of written with um with eurovision in mind and then um i think we decided to keep the the sort of longer version of it because it didn't it didn't quite make the cut that year um I, I reckon uh oh, what's the song off of v christ uh embrace the limitless mm. i think could could be could be something that would okay. work okay in, in, interesting uh for, for from from colors in the sun my pick would have been uh bright star and um from from v it would have been hyperventilating <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah true hyperventilating is a good one we were, i was listening to yeah. we was listening to colors uh the song colors yesterday in the car with my wife and she's like man this would have been cool for eurovision as well if you just take this part out and then take this part out and then i <laughs> and then i was like nah i would leave that part in take that other part out she's like no nah, you can't take that part out and it's, it's <laughs> that's such the good a bit. <laughs> yeah to start chopping away at a song you already are really familiar with that's that's a whole different thing i think when you're not already in love with something and you can deliberately chop it down and make it something mm. uh shorter as was a lot easier I'm glad yeah. we didn't have to do that to one of our old songs. Yeah, reverse engineering something like that would feel really weird. You get so used to hearing something being a certain way, and once you once you slice and chop it up, it just it almost feels like uh, it's wrong. I, even, I can't think of an analogy. Yeah, it just it just doesn't feel right. It feel like you're always reminding yourself of the old version. Like, oh, remember that cool bit that used to be in there and <laughs> no longer is. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like the ghost of the cutting room floor coming back to haunt you <laughs> every time. Yeah. I, well, I, I get that with some of our demos. Like you, we listen to mm. the demos of our of our new material so heavily and often, and then when we record it and mix it, for whatever reason, that one weird sound or one drum fill never makes it in, and you just miss it. And it takes another you know a hundred listens to forget that you you uh that you used to like it anyway. But there there is one bit in you the shallow that was in the demo was it you the shallow no not you the shallow um oh what's that what's the song that i'm thinking of alex that has that what's bit in the it? song what's the oh. song do we do the song with the melody what's what domination game domination game thank you i don't even know the names of my own songs here we go i wrote that one so that's why i remember it yeah there was just like god bless you there was just this one bit that Danny did in the vocal, which was just a, a gag in the demo that I just hear every single time we play that song. I just <laughs> even hear <now>. this vocal <laughs> gag, even now, like nearly a decade later, it's still in my mind 
every time we play that song, I, I still hear that vocal gag in the demo. When we is it literally that. a vocal gag? Like a, oh. it's, li- it's literally <laughs> Danny just going, ah, oh, at really? a point oh, okay. in the demo. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can't unhear it. I cannot unhear it. Every time I listen to that song, I'm like waiting for that little trauma. Just, well, I, 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 every time I see that song title, I... I I have to think about Symphony X and the Demination game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Into the damn, 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 damn. Yeah, me too, Dario. Me too. <laughs> Those were the days, right? <laughs> I love Symphony X. Yeah, I used to listen to Symphony X. When I was at high school, the only way I could listen to Symphony X was uh, via their website. So in math class, we had computers. You know, they were, they were crap, but... They had MIDI versions of all their like songs from the Odyssey back on their website. And we just used to put those on and listen to them quietly in class. And just MIDI transcriptions of Symphony X. It was so good. <laughs> That's, that is so nerdy. nerdy. Is, that, is that not the nerdiest prog thing ever? <laughs> Absolutely. Like that. Yeah. I can't compete and, with that. But, but <laughs> Symphony X were one of, one of, uh, one of the first bands, uh, like prog or metal bands, that I've uh, I saw I went by my own. I was like 16 or 17, maybe, in Paris, doing like a like a like a social um, thing um, for two weeks or three weeks, and um, I was at the like like a guest family, and yeah, oh, cool. I, I could I I could go there for the Odyssey tour. Oh, yeah. You could, uh, you wow. did, you saw them on yeah, the Odyssey tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went, I went all by myself, and I was like, uh, that was oh, uh, quite That's the experience. <laughs> oh, can I, can I just share? You <laughs> saying, you saying the Odyssey? Um, a few years ago, I've got a friend, and we, uh, he was getting married, and I, I went to his bucks party. And at at bu- some bucks parties, um, they they'll hire a uh, a female entertainer to come in and do like a lap dance or something like that so this um and like give drinks and and things like that to the people that are there and this um yeah this so this girl was there and she was um serving out drinks uh and she's very scantily clad and she's like the time came for her to do a dance like around the place or something like that so because we're at like this this house the groom was a prog head so he put, he was drunk and he put on the Odyssey and trying to see this woman dance to the Od- Symphony X's The Odyssey and hearing it for the first time, like, and trying to be sexy doing it. I had to like, I had to go, I'm sorry, I need to turn this song off because this is just awkward for everyone. Yeah. That was pretty funny. <laughs> they should have put on some Voyager instead, right? Yeah, right. That's, that's, that's more sexy. <laughs> yeah. Striptease, Thank striptease. you, Dario. Thank you. <laughs> Strip teasing in odd time signatures. I, I want to see this. I'm not saying that Symphony X are bad or, you know, uncool or whatever, but, you know, maybe um, one thing they aren't is sexy. But, you know, that's just my perspective. <laughs> All right. Um, let's 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 move away a little bit. I mean, we 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 already did uh, move away from from <laughs> let's stay on Symphony and... X. <laughs> <laughs> let's stay on stripping the Symphony X. Strippers <laughs> and Symphony X. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, actually, I I I got a couple of uh, I think inter- interesting questions about uh, Eurovision and uh, heavy music. And um, so, um, for, first of all, um. Do do you know? The, I I would guess you know the other uh, contestants or what? How do you call them? Like yeah, yep, yeah. Um, dreamers. You 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 you're going <laughs> going up against. Um, yeah, I've got a list. Ah, uh, so um, is there any 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 song in particular that you think mm, that one? could make it that that one is dangerous for us <laughs> okay i've got some i've got some cool facts so um i i don't know any of the other songs that have been released uh, other than one that got released uh the same day as ours mm-hmm. so we released dreamer on thursday and one of the other contestants jude york uh, he's a young singer songwriter um from the eastern states of australia he released his song uh, which is called I Won't Need to Dream. And um, I thought that was wild. Yeah, mm. it's, and it's very different to Dreamer. It's, it's a more of a slow ballad uh, kind of 
kind of a song. Um, but what I what I can say is that like from from the comments on our YouTube channel, um, people have pointed out that since we dropped Dreamer, Australia keep um, topping the list and the the odds uh, for Australia to be winning. Um, so we seem to be like moving the needle in a, in and the betting odds, which is pretty cool. <laughs> but apart from that, I don't know if there, any other songs have been released. Have you heard any other, Scott? Don't. No, I, don't, I think that is the only one as far as, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. We just know that the contestants themselves, but I don't think in, any other songs have been like, yeah, publicly aired yeah. at this point. Mm-hmm. So, and, 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 and for, uh, judging from the artists that, 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 you know, from, from the previous uh, work, that you might know is there anyone that you think oh they they they're really cool and they they you you think they could put out a massive banger that that might be potentially dangerous for your win <laughs> i think um i think jackie jones was actually pretty cool like her last submission um was pretty sweet and it was more like more akin to what we would do something that's maybe just a little a little heavier than like your your standard pop tune and what she did was quite dark and and quite interesting. So I, I dug what she did last time. I kind um, of got a Katy Perry esque kind of vibe from that. Did you, Scott? Is yeah. That, yeah. Is that kind of the ballpark? I mean, just yeah. to draw comparisons, it's easier to, to understand. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, well, speaking like, about heaviness, like, uh, there, there's, there, there's there's one thing I want I wanted to say about Dreamer still. Um, I mean, when when the first chorus kicks in with the with the heavy uh, guitars, I was like. Okay, for me personally, this could have been like twice as heavy <laughs> for the for that real impact. But for the, for the average pop listener, I guess that's pretty pretty heavy, heavy already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. So it's it's sort of it is a it is a game of contrast. We're used to the contrast being pretty extreme on the mo- for the most part. But I think in a way, it's actually kind of cool leaving people wanting a little bit more and then being able to lift it even more like one of the one of the things that people have said about dreamer so far is that it seems to keep lifting you know so like we're very used to things already being at maximum you know a song comes in with a giant tom feel and it's blast beats straight away (laughs) Um, we're pretty used to hearing that but you know it's kind of cool giving this sort of tiered level of of intensity as you go i think that is i think that's a cool thing about that track if you are enjoying this interview, please head over to theprogspace.com for more reviews, articles, pictures and interviews all about progressive music. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. theprogspace.com Yeah, you, you, you just mentioned this other uh, song, I'm... I'm not a dreamer or what, what, whatever it was, um, being mm-hmm. like a more slow and, and um, slow ballad. And that reminded me of uh, one, one of the only other occasions uh, that I know of that a, like a real prog band uh, went into the um, national pre um, contest, whatever, for the Eurovision Song Contest. And that was, of course, Pain of Salvation with Rose oh, yeah. Salt, if you remember. And yeah. I mean, that was kind of the antithesis to a Eurovision song from, uh, I would say, because that was like literally going nowhere and uh, like staying at the same introvert and, 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 and slow and dark and, and, and moody and melancholic pace. And the whole band would, would be sitting there. Like, I, I don't know if you've seen the clip. Um, I, not anytime recently, but I mean, I, I really love Pain of Salvation and they're like, I used to listen to them a lot um you know back back in the day we actually lent them our instruments <laughs> for prog power europe because theirs didn't turn up and uh, uh yeah that was the one you prog power europe in the last 12 years i i i, uh, I, I missed I miss. yeah oh. <laughs> but yeah pain of pain of salvation have got some yeah just in i mean yeah daniel's just a, a kind of like a mad scientist um or a mad shaman. Maybe he's more of a shaman than a scientist. <laughs> Get more of a shamanistic vibe from Daniel these days. But uh, um, yeah, they're I, awesome. I, I, I thought it was a, was a very very odd um, decision to take the song because it like it doesn't have any you know flashes or pink glitter or anything party uh, related whatever. Um, 
and 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 like you're you're expecting like the huge you know big chorus. explosion yeah. but there's nothing happening so i thought mm, well, like like another pain of salvation song might have been more <laughs> successful maybe <laughs> yeah some, yeah sometimes you got to give the people what they want you know if if you're yeah. going to a eurovision gig and and you want you know the the big grandiose experience and you've got to have a song that sort of matches that i feel you know it's like you wouldn't you wouldn't play a pop banger at a funeral you know yeah yeah know your crowd right scott yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah know your audience yeah. Yeah. i mean you know like a big that i feel like the um the compass for us in this new eurovision uh, ocean and navigating through it is is our singer danny you know, he's he's such a Eurovision aficionado that a lot of this we just kind of like <laughs> we've been like, I don't know, man, what do you think? Like you tell <laughs> us because he he, you know, he was at Tel Aviv in like 2019. Um, a lot of people are saying that the lights that we had in Dreamer are like the lights that were um used that were prevalent Aviv, right? in at Tel Aviv. And Danny mm -hmm. never mentioned that. So I don't know if he just forgot or if it's just a happy accident. <laughs> that people are seeing these lights in the dreamer video clip going like that and they're yeah. like oh it's tel aviv and it's like it's already making them think that we're on a eurovision stage which is just <laughs> such a happy accident happy accident yeah. <laughs> yeah. so good yeah but we trust him you know he, he he loves eurovision and he knows he knows what's expected and he's you know as as a musician and a very you know as having a being able to critique music in its um yeah, d down to its purest form. It, it's good to have someone like that in the band that can tell us what's Eurovision and what's not Eurovision. You know, mm. like, look, it's not like the beauty of it is if you want if you want to hear us play more complicated and heavy shit. Like, we've got eight, we've got well seven albums out at the moment that you can go back and hear us do that. But we're not going to like alienate the Eurovision <laughs> crowd just for our own, you know our own ego, ego to just have yeah. crazy riffs and you know technical blast beats it's just it's we, we would <laughs> we'd be shooting ourselves in the foot for no reason so yeah go, and, and go, again go it's, it was still <laughs> yeah yeah exactly still, yeah 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 <laughs> we don't need blast beats in this song but it's it's again it's kind of like it's a cool challenge because again it had to break our expectations of of what a song should be especially a, a heavy song you know i think that there are very few heavy songs out there that uh three minutes in length and you know get to the point very quickly and and unless it's that... grindcore yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah yeah that's very true look point taken <laughs> they can get through an entire album in three minutes you know yeah you know? yeah <laughs> that is so not uh, not esc compa compatible <laughs> no 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 i wouldn't even not even remotely but yeah, it, it's kind of cool taking uh, taking a nod from the pop world in in that sense and sort of extracting the good parts of or the things that we like about pop music and putting it into something heavy, I think is is really awesome. So yeah, it's sort of a, a bit of give and take. And it's just also really awesome to see um, so many fans, whether they be new or old fans, just jumping straight on board with it too. You know, there, there is a obviously always a little bit of apprehension about jumping into something like Eurovision as a heavy band. Because there is this, I hate to say it, but there is sort of this elitist attitude that comes with the heavy metal audience um, where as soon as someone starts to go just a little bit more pop in any sort of way, it feels like a betrayal to the heavy music community. And it's ultimately, it's not really about that. I think there's a, there's a really good crossover mm. that could occur with heavy music and pop music, to be perfectly honest. And it's, it goes unexplored because of a weird negative stigma, I think. I, I, I have the feeling uh, in the last 10, 15 years, uh, maybe um, that uh, has like, like there was, there's like a slight but steady change happening uh, yeah. in, in, in the, in the, uh, in the scene. Um, I mean, bands like Lepras or Vola or, or Voyager. I mean, you, you, you guys are, 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 spearheading that movement or even you know the there's you know the like in in gent or you know progressive metalcore or whatever there's a lot of like very very poppy melodies like uh, uh, bands mm -hmm. like like uh, siamese from 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 denmark or um um 
Yeah, there's lots of, you know, I think Siamese, was it Siamese that uh, were kind of dubbed R&B core or something? You know, there's like... Yeah. <laughs> this, you can uh, almost right. apply heaviness to any genre. That's, that's, that's what makes it so good. Like... Hmm. Yeah, like a jazz I mean, metal, you know. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, when you think when you think of metal and what it is, it's just it's a dynamic, right? A lot of it is just about most bands will go to to you know to C, but then metal goes to Z in terms of heaviness, um, and that realm doesn't really get explored all that much by um, other artists or other genres. So I think there's this whole depth of just dynamics that metal has that could be imported into pop music in a way that could be really interesting um so yeah it's kind of it's cool that i i agree with you dario that i think the attitude towards that is changing as well i made it sound like it's still the same <laughs> as ever but it really it's it's ultimately it's really not and i think that's an awesome thing i think that's really cool but you know there's always there's always that little thought in the back of your mind where you know you just hope that people can kind of see it for what it is and still have fun with it ultimately um i mean um Vola have put out their th mm, third album, third album last year, um, Witness. Yeah. And uh, I mean, they, they, since the beginning, they had like very, very poppy choruses, like slapped against yeah. uh, Mashuga riffs, whatever, in the, in the verse or whatever. And uh, I mean, on Witness, there is, of course, uh, um, these Black Claws uh, featuring Shaman, uh, the 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 hip hop the rap track and and mm. I um this track I, the, I, <laughs> I have I have <laughs> I have heard uh, from uh, or have read from some some friends and also uh, fellow reviewers um, who are not digging it at all but they were they were respectful of it and said it's not for me I don't I don't vibe with it which is mm. cool but but but. Uh, this um being cool with it and and just enjoying the rest of the album um that's that's something that might uh, might have been different for a large part of the scene 20 years ago or definitely yeah definitely. but in saying that you know let let's take a moment to um to thank soil work and textures <laughs> you know they were doing that when we were coming up like you know 10 12 15 years ago um taking that that mashuga heaviness soil work maybe not so much they're more of a like a gothenburg death metal kind of thing right <laughs> but te but mm. textures were like yeah. one of those first bands to really like take that mashuga sound and then the melodic choruses that you know every everyone loves and merge them together and they were like you know i, I think they were probably they faced criticism for that in the early i remember what it was like you know, people are like, oh, well, it's going to be fucking, it's, it's either going to be heavy or it's, or it's not, you know, or you're having wimpy choruses or whatever. But now, <laughs> you know, I was actually, I was getting excited explaining this to my wife, like in the car yesterday, because Texas came on as well. I was like, <laughs> Texas, look at And I told them how I saw their last show. Uh, I saw them for the first time at their last show at Euroblast a couple of years ago. And man, what a, like, what a band. I'm so, I'm so bummed that they called it a day. That was mm. so good. Yeah, we 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 derived again into into prog nerding, but I absolutely love it. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, there's still a couple of uh, uh, Eurovision related uh, stuff. Sorry, I'd, Dario, I'd, sorry. I'd like to talk about. It. That's that's fine. I I absolutely love every second of it. Um, so um, of course, every, every everyone knows, even though uh, it, probably even if they don't uh, watch the Eurovision Song Contest, um, every metalhead knows that Lordy won the mm, won it Did once, it, like two thousand six, I think. Yeah, six, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this year, I, I think uh, I saw it on on your page. You guys shared an article from Metal Hammer or Louder Sound, I think, um, about like uh, a lot of heavy bands that are uh, potentially competing this year, um, apart from Voyager. Um, so there's like uh, six six other heavy bands that they listed. Did you did you did you, did you check out the article? Did you did you check out the other uh, bands? Um, I've, I know there's there's um, Eskimo Cowboy. Is that what it's uh, called? Cool, cool Boy Eskimo Cool Boy. Boy. I think isn't it? Yeah, 
from and they're yeah. from Italy, right? No, they're, they're from Germany. Oh, they're, they're German. Oh, they're from Germany. Yeah, yeah. Oh, far out. Okay. <laughs> so we know where Dario's vote's gone. Great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure. <laughs> but, uh, um, no, I haven't. I know a heavy band kind of did a heavy band won it last year. Did they? Yeah, that was oh, that man, was yeah, Moneskin from from yeah. from 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 Italy, and yeah. it, and and uh, yeah, uh, competing for Italy also this year. I I have no idea if there there was any mm, you know national tryouts or whatever they're called um, yet. So pr probably all of those are just potential. Mm, Contest. Well, that's great, Daria, because I'm I'm really hoping <laughs> that um, being in a band, like you know, like cyclical trends, you know, like being in a band will be cool in the mainstream again very soon. Hopefully now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we've we've been around long just, enough just for just the whole thing. for, for yeah. as long well, as possible, and then well, eventually well, you'll, you'll be cool again. So, yeah, yeah. For, for Italy, the the <laughs> the, the potential uh, band that that might uh, uh, compete against you, maybe even, uh, is a Nano War of Steel. Have you heard about that? No, it's not Mana War though. No, it's Nano War of Steel. Nano oh. War of Steel. Okay. Um, what was the they 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 did some like like it's 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 kind of comedy metal, I guess, but uh, really <laughs> really well done. Again, metal is just the the perfect you know <laughs> side dish for any other genre. Comedy metal. Comedy metal. <laughs> yeah. Isn't um, Bill ba is Bill Bailey a part of this this year? Or is yeah, I keep seeing yeah. his. Yeah, yeah, up. yeah. It it was it, it was uh, written in the article that Bill Bailey uh, was yeah. uh, also How are we gonna compete potentially. With him? <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck are we going to beat Bill Bailey, Scott? Yeah. How do we do it? Yeah. Uh, we're cooked. Uh, uh, so you you guys inside a piano with spoons. <laughs> <laughs> you guys really should check out Nano War Steel and um, okay. Um, the, we need a crash um, course, really, don't we? we? Need to do more more research. Yeah. There, there, more there research. was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, 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 there was one song they did, uh, Norwegian reggaeton. Yeah, <laughs> Norwegian reggaeton. Did you say? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> but maybe maybe one one band uh, um, you you might remember uh, from Finland, the Rasmus. They had like a huge hit uh, like ten years ago or something. <laughs> <laughs> In the shadows. And they Ooh. did some some crossover with like like some some cross some feature with with Apocalyptica as well. Um, so they're supposed to put out a song as well. Oh, okay. To well, throw damn. in the in the ring. Well, maybe maybe our pop leanings, you know, will will edge us out in this. You know, maybe that'll <laughs> be the the part that saves the heavy metal band. Who knows? It's pretty <laughs> fascinating. You know, I as far like. The way I see it, we can't lose. Like we cannot lose in any of this. We come last, we still win. You know, it's I don't know whether that's way too much of a hippie kind of mentality to have, but um way too hippie, man. We've got to crush this. That's it. It's yeah, either yeah, win okay. or die. Yeah, let's let's snap it. it into like crush everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hyper competitive. Death to all butt <laughs> metal. <laughs> yeah. Death so, to all butt metal? <laughs> Is it is is, is uh, so? Is there um is, is the the um, Australia decides thing? Is there, is there gonna be like a like a broadcast you can watch uh, overseas as well? I believe so. Yeah, it's all it's like all online. SBS. Yeah, I think SBS do a an online stream. Um, I think it's sbs dot com dot au. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, okay, that, we, we, I, I think there is way a way to to see it overseas. Yeah, we we we'll we'll research and uh, and have a look. Um, yeah, we we already talked about you know Pain of Salvation and, and other um, other metal bands that that might compete or already competed. Um, but um, apart from that, is there any other metal or prog band that you think um, you could imagine participating? Leprous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. even leprous. Even that leprous. would be very good. I think Leprous yeah. would absolutely crush it. Yeah. Yeah. Um I, I, they they even had the ha, had their white suits out already for below, right? For the for the video. Was it below? Yeah. yeah, uh, it was, yeah. <laughs> oh um no, it was Oh no, it was it was an it was the new one from uh from the new record, right? 
Get the first back track. To the nation. Yeah, with the trumpets and shit. It's a miracle, miracle. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. 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 I just can't remember the name of the uh, song. So good. Running, running low. Running low. Yeah. 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 That's something yeah, that's insane. Right. Something with low. <laughs> Man, yeah, I reckon they're such a good killer. band. They're so good. You know, yeah. it's. Yeah, Crazy. next, uh, next, uh, actually, um, from when we when we are recording next next week, next Saturday, they're gonna do the, another live stream with their uh, from early demos to to Aphelion. Where do they uh, find the time, Dario? <laughs> that's How all do they, they do, do, I think. <laughs> they're too prolific. <laughs> yeah, Slow <to> down. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, to be to be honest, um, the, You're making us look bad. <laughs> <laughs> this 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 episode is gonna uh, drop uh, after the the um l the the live stream uh, will have taken place. Was it the right time? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, oh, leprosies. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. On on, on January twenty ninth. Uh, but maybe it's 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 still available. Um, I think the last last uh, couple of live streams they did last year uh they were available uh, for 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 one or two two weeks uh after still um so so you guys out there can can see if you can still catch it if you missed it um apart from all the the eurovision shenanigans uh you're up to right now of course it's 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 gonna be soon and and i guess that's all you're focused on right now but um judging from some social media posts in the last months i guess there's uh, not only dreamer the single um, ready and uh, recorded but also what are you trying some, to say daria some, some more <laughs> material some you want some breadcrumbs do you you want some crumbs <laughs> yeah <laughs> all of the all the snippets you've seen are just the bits that didn't make that song so unfortunately dreamer is all we have right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've got some um man we've got yeah we've got other songs like for everyone that thinks that dream is not heavy enough like we've got three other songs that are tuned to low g so just chill, <laughs> just relax. Don't worry. Wait a little bit it's for heavy. these other songs to come out. Because it's, yeah, man, we've, we've done everything differently. You know what, Scott, do you reckon like Dreamer was the catalyst for us kind of like evolving our entire songwriting um, way or techniques? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, even I mean, to recording, we've re recorded everything like live in a room for the first time. Wow. ever and it was just it was just magic like we you know we were talk we were talking about this in the studio um the other day when i was tracking i was retracking some of my bass parts actually i didn't re record it i just cut some out i was like yeah let's get rid of me and some of these parts so ash and the drums can shine a little bit more and simone was like man we're are we getting old or you know like let's <laughs> we're getting so mature in our songwriting Let, let's take me out instead of like can you turn me up yeah so <laughs> It's been cool, man. This the next release is going to be so good. Like, I'm really, really yeah. looking forward to it, and it's it's yeah, just the same. start. I, I feel it's just the start for us now. Yeah. So yeah, did, 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 I, I was go just going to say, it just feels it feels like the the approach is is so dramatically different, and yet I think just all of us as individuals loved the process so much this time around as well. I mean, we've always enjoyed writing music together, but there was something really special about the approach we took this time where we would all sort of collectively listen to each other's parts being constructed. Um, so there's, there was so much more creative crossover and not just out, you know, in terms of me and Simone working on ideas, but you know, we would write a riff and Danny would be like, Oh, that's kind of cool. Follow that path. I like that idea, you know? Um, and then we would be talking about Danny's vocals and, and even lyrics, which is something that I don't think we've really ever yeah. done. You know where we unless would, there's a particularly you know, like lame line we're like danny that's lame change it <laughs> <man."> <laughs> yeah. get rid of that yeah. uh, ha hello kitty <laughs> sorry yeah. this, my cat is just scratching everything in this room right now uh, uh. <laughs> he's, been a, he's been a cheeky little boy <clears throat> well he's gone <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. You see blood <laughs> splatter across the back wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> um, I'm super stoked about uh, the 
new material um a power from dreamer and um, how how it compares how it how it holds up against and uh, how it's different to dreamer and um so do you do you know at this point if you will include dreamer in the in the next album or will it remain uh, this the standalone single yeah don't know i i would assume so yeah i, I think, think our idea is to have it on the record yeah, yeah. um we've kind of got like a, a tentative sort of track listing um and it is on there i think it's i think it's a an, a it fits the record i feel um mm. there's definitely it's, it's a very to me so far the, the writing has sort of been very uh contrasty like they're there there's really heavy and really dark stuff on the album but then there's stuff that's really poppy and really bright um mm -hmm. so i think you know dreamer is the yin to the heavy stuff's young yang on this record i think you know <laughs> all right uh, one last question maybe i just uh, realized or, or just um yeah thinking about voyager and you, you guys um having like a pretty stable lineup for 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 some years and for some records now um do you think the the, the chemistry within this stable lineup enabled you to um like focus your songwriting in such a way to be uh confident enough to compete in the eurovision song contest as well uh, did that contribute maybe to that as well I think it 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 contributes positively to absolutely everything that we do. It's like when you've got a happy a happy band and or any creative venture where there's multiple people, you know, holding the steering wheel, you you need to have a special dynamic and I really feel that like that's actually really set us apart from many other bands and it's it's probably yeah, aided our long longevity. Um yeah, with with Ash in the band i think maybe he's been in the band for like coming up on 10 years i think something like that i mean the time has flown by but you know <laughs> but he, so he it, was the last member to join yeah. right, of the current yeah. lineup yeah yeah so um i mean when we're when we get in a room together we normally like we have to focus because we just get carried away with memes and laughing <laughs> and just stupid jokes which is so it's so nice it's it's a really nice like pressure valve when from from outside life if you can just get in here and often you just forget what you're in the room for to begin with but <laughs> we're all happy we're all we're all into we've got our own dynamic going on there's there's no there's no egos in the band there's if we can be honest with each other which is also very important so i mean i i i think what what you'll hear in this new material as you've kind of gotten a taste of with dreamer is is a band that's that's very mature that we're very sure of ourselves um but we're still curious and we work well together and uh yeah it's just it's one of these you know not to be like too like emotional about it but it's 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 one of these partnerships and one of these ventures that one you know I, i'll look back on once it's all said and done and be so proud and just happy that I've spent my time creating this kind of stuff with people that I love. And uh, yeah, not there's not many band bands and members of bands that can say that about their other band members. Um, so yeah, I'll I mean, stop before I start crying. <laughs> well, I, I think Alex really speaks for himself because I actually really <laughs> hate everybody else in the band. And, and there it is. In, in <laughs> honesty, in honesty, my seething seething hatred is what really fueled the music for me um so yeah but you're a dickhead scott so yeah 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 <laughs> you're 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 only in See, it for exactly. the money right you're you're, yeah. you're only here in we it are for the here's money. the reason why everything keeps going wrong yeah. <laughs> he's you're a moron only... that's why he's doing it for the money <laughs> yeah you're, you're only in enough. the in the prog band i'm gonna get there i swear because of the yeah. money right R wrong <laughs> niche I'm, bro I'm I'm only here for money. That's it. Like he could have chosen, he could have chosen um, NFTs and crypto, but he went with progressive metal. <laughs> 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 Wonderful, uh, Scott, um, Alex, thank you so much for this glimpse into the world of into the wonderful <laughs> world of Voyager, <laughs> the nutty world of Voyager. Yeah, sorry, Dario. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Um, uh, 
I hope we can talk again soon. Um, now the, the sun is coming up behind me, as you can see with my, my halo getting bigger. Glowing halo. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys out there, uh, don't forget to check out the new Voyager single Dreamer and also um, tune in for... Um, and like follow Voyager socials to to be alerted uh, about the progress uh, of Voyager yeah. in the Eurovision Song Contest this year, which is super exciting. I think um, you, the first time I heard about the hashtag Voyager for Eurovision was already three or four years ago, at least. I think so 2015. It's been, yeah. It's been, <laughs> oh, that's 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 almost seven. Damn. <laughs> time, time flies. Yeah, time right flies. For a while. <laughs> um yeah um follow um the socials of uh voyager to be alerted how how that is going um thank you for for tuning in thanks for you for your interest i hope you guys like what we're doing um if you haven't done so already follow us as well and give us a like and subscribe and uh, um, thumbs up and comment whatever you know the drill and uh, don't forget the cup of coffee it it uh Helps us a lot, and yeah, kitty, kitty um, pictures always, uh, 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 always, always help uh, with the reach, right? And the uh, right, yeah, I do. Yeah, cat, cats have the best reach. We've had two true. cats. I can bring a dog in here now if you want, but nah. <laughs> don't jinx it. All right, uh, talk to you soon, guys. Uh, you guys are there. Thanks for listening. Um, and uh, until next time, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and. Don't forget to keep spreading that prog love. Spread it. <laughs> Spread it. The Prog Talks, produced by the Prog Space. Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynos. Produced by Rune Belsvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Sack Munavitz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week. <laughs>